One of the best parts of the third annual Vail Scientific Summit was getting to hear crooner, performer John Vincent, sing all of the favorite classics from Sinatra to Louis Armstrong. And I got to chat with him and it was amazing. I never thought I would be a singer. I thought I'd be a football player. So I, was, uh, I went to a Chicago school, a football powerhouse in the Catholic League called uh, St. Lawrence. And it was 100 kids trying out, and I was the first one cut. I was smaller than everybody. Smaller than everybody. And uh, it was hilarious. Like I'm like, I'm done, forget it. I'm never going to try for football again, blah, blah, blah. Junior or senior year, I'd grow eight inches. They're like, you're coming to play football. Played there, started. Uh, went to Elmhurst College, was preseason All-American, got hurt, played a year of pro football in Germany. Didn't go any further than that with a recruiter in accounting and finance. And my sister goes, Johnny, when you sing along to Sinatra, you sound like him. And I'm like, I'm 29 years old. I'm not going to, what am I going to do with this? I'm not going to become a singer at 29. You know, it's not something you do. And she's like, why don't you try it? Why don't you try it at night? Why don't you just see what happens? Um was with a girl at the time who like broke my heart like uh, we were engaged and she cheated on me and I'm like screw this engagement's off I'm going to Vegas tonight and go nuts and I did I jumped on a flight to Vegas and just went nuts for a week and I got this Italian mother who's like crying she's like Johnny what are you doing I'm like mom I'm gonna become a singer don't worry about it she's like what are you talking about you got a great job I'm like I'm gonna become a singer just just give me you know just give me a second to clear my head here. I want to have some fun in Vegas. So when I came back home, I had a cassette back then. This was 2001. And I started messing around, handing it at places. Now, my parents were born in Italy. I never listened to Sinatra growing up. But my best friend in college got us tickets to see Sinatra because his grandfather knew him. And we went to go see him at the United Center. <clears throat> and Don Rickard, Rickles uh, opened up for him at that time. So I just started liking him then, liked him in my 20s, would sing along to him. My family was like, you kind of sound like Frank. After that, the cassette thing made this. I started a place called Rosebuds and Nono Pinos. Then one of the recruiters that I worked with went to Ditka's restaurant to meet a client. They had a guy singing Sinatra. They'd have a different singer every week. So they had about seven that they rotated. And if you live in Chicago, going to Ditka's wasn't really a big thing because it was mostly tourists back then that would go and it still is a lot of tourist business so I never stepped foot in there you know mine was like Lincoln Park bars things like that just on a whim my, my buddy goes my buddy's trying to do Sinatra you know he's, he's trying to do it and the manager heard, overheard it and go give him my card so I walk in there and I walk up the stairs and there's Mike Ditka and Mrs. Ditka I'm like this is John Vincent we're going to give him an audition tonight to sing and she's like you know what? Forget that. Let me hear New York, New York. And I'm like, I can't like, get some music on. She goes, no, right now. And I did it. And she goes, you're hired. She goes, hire him. So they gave me a four-month deal. Quit my day job. They're like, you could come back if it doesn't work out. And then they gave me a year. And then they gave me a lifetime. And that was uh, 16 years ago. It was August um, of 2001. I've been there ever since. Yeah, coach was like, Johnny, try Dean Martin. So I was like, okay, I'll try Dean Martin. Try this guy. I was like, okay, you know, Johnny, I really love that song, What a Wonderful World. So I'm like, okay, Louis Armstrong, kind of, you know, everybody does it like where they really over-exaggerate it, but Louis doesn't. Louis kind of talks it through, so it's almost like, you know, I see those trees of green, red roses too, I see them bloom. So it's something I just kind of would hear with my ear and then say, you know, it's, it's like, it's like, Ray Charles, I know there's something in his jaw where he lowers it. So it's like, Georgia, oh Georgia, the whole day through. Where Dino would also be that crooner. Where Sinatra would be like, you know, and did it my way. Sinatra would be the singer, right? He would give more of the oomph. So what I did, I just kept messing around with all these different singers, this, that, everything else. And We'll try to get their nuances. Johnny Cash with his, you know, I hear the train a coming, it's rolling around the bend. You know, it was all talk with John. You know, he, he would talk a song and feel that pain and that sorrow. So it was all coach Didka saying, try this, step out of the box, try that. I used to do the same six Sinatra songs over and over and drive people crazy. 
I don't want to hear um, Summer Wind again. And I'm like, what else do you got? New York, New York. What else you got? My way. What else you got? Under my skin. And then I'm like, uh, the way you look tonight. And they're like, that's it? I'm like, that's five. Wait, I thought you had six. And I'm like, oh, that's right. I got five. <laughs> So, so, so how did you get connected with Spry and the Stedman Clinic? Uh, I was in Las Vegas performing at Mandalay Bay, and through Ditka's, I've met just about everybody, and I've became friends with so many people. So, um, became really good friends. I'm a Packer fan out of Chicago. Became really good friends with Brett Favre's wife, uh, mother. Did the anthem for Lambo uh, at 2000, since 2003. I just did the last playoff game there against the Giants. Me and Coach McCarthy have become very close friends. Um, the Cubs, 2003, had me start singing the anthem there. That's how that started. All these 85 Bears players that would come in became close. Hey, Johnny, would you sing at this event? Would you sing at that event? One of the guys was Jim Colvin. So Jim, who played at Pitt, said, would you sing at one of my company's events at the, at the Art Institute? I'm like, sure. So I sang. Me and Jim became friends. And he goes, you know what? I'm in Vegas. You're out here? I'm like, yeah, I'm performing at Mandalay. He goes, I'm going to bring my friend Dan. You're going to love him out there. So that's when me and Dan became friends. So I sang at his rehearsal dinner in Florida. And then I went to his wedding, you know, after that, the next day. And then Dan has me for all these events now. That is so cool. So it's just interesting because when you look at your whole trajectory, how heartbreak opened this door to this whole other life. So looking back, are you almost thankful? Oh, God, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she came back into my life, tried to after that, and I was like, okay. No, it was funny. Um, yeah, it was great because it, it would have never turned out this way. I don't think, I mean, I don't think I would have eventually gone down that path. I think it just kind of, that's how it happened, right? By chance. You know, well, I, you know, I just did a, a radio interview with the, um, the, the score. And uh, it's, a, it's a AM station in Chicago. It's a big sports station in Chicago. And I'm very open about my struggle with OCD, anxi- anxiety, and depression. I won't lie about it. I'll just say, hey, this is what it is. I, I did the anthem for game four, and my phone blew up. Uh, uh, Access Hollywood, all these things started doing stuff. And I'm like, what the hell just happened? Lady Gaga tweeted, John Vincent, wow, that's how you do the anthem, Goosebumps. So that like changed my career. But the one thing I loved is that she came out and spoke about mental illness and she was very open about it. And I'm like, that's great. You know, somebody in her spot to do that, that's so inspiring. So um, I've met people like Jamie Foxx, I've sang with him, I've sang with uh, Faith Hill, sang at uh, a bunch of different big events. President Obama, Mayor Daley brought me out to Copenhagen for the Olympic bid. a whole bunch of different uh, Google. I went to go speak there for them. Um, Facebook, uh, you name it. But the one thing I do say about music is I know when I'm in a tough spot or I'm struggling, music helps me. Even if I'm not singing, listening to it. Now that I'm capable of singing it, that really helps because that really makes you feel good that you're able to sing along with it.